During the summer, after my first year of college, I was gonna stay with my grandparents for a couple days. They live near a place called Bluff, Utah. It's in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by the desert. I'm half Navajo, and that part of my family is big in the traditional ways, but most of them all go to church every week. Most natives are like that. It's kind of boring staying with them. There's really nothing to do there. I really didn't have much to do during the summer. I didn't have a job, and all the people that I knew from school were staying in their hometowns. And I was still debating whether I would go back in the fall. The first day that I stayed there was typical. Nothing was out of the ordinary. My grandfather did say something about a stray dog that would come out of nowhere during the night. He said that it acted kind of strange and was very ugly. That night, we were watching a movie in the living room. They had satellite, which is one saving grace, and internet, but it was very slow and useless. Another good thing about staying there was my grandmother's cooking. There was a big window behind the sofa that looked out into nothing. We were watching TV. I was on the sofa, and my grandfather was in the kitchen watching TV in front of the sink. He usually watches like that. I get up to go to the bathroom, and I notice something in the window. That stray dog was staring right at us. At first, I thought it was their dog. He's usually outside. They rarely bring him in. It didn't look like a normal dog. It was huge, but looked malnourished at the same time. I asked my grandfather, whose dog is in the window? He looks and acts like this is a common occurrence, and tries to shoo the dog away. This ugly dog slowly turns away into the darkness. He said that the dog had been around a couple times before and tried to get inside their house through the dog door. But that dog door is for smaller breeds of dogs. My grandfather thought that it must have been the neighbors that lived about a half a mile down the road. We stay up a little bit later. Then my grandfather says he's heading off to bed. It was still pretty early, around 10.30 and I wasn't tired at all. I continue to watch TV. When I hear the doorknob to the front door jiggling, like somebody's trying to get in, I quietly walk to the door and look through the peephole. In front of me was the face of that large dog. At first, it was looking to its right and then turns and looks right at me. As if it knows, I'm looking right at it. This door, which is about two inches thick, is the only thing separating us. Their dog was outside, but it wasn't barking, and it was a pretty good guard dog that would warn us if any animals were nearby. It was trying to open the door again. I stood frozen for a few seconds, not knowing what to do. I jiggled the doorknob and pounded on the door a couple times to get its attention. I guess it worked because their dog started to bark and this thing slowly walks away. Because of the darkness, I still didn't get a good look at this thing. I still thought it was a dog. About an hour or more passes and I was getting tired. I would normally sleep in one of the spare bedrooms, but there was a lot of beating equipment in the bedroom, so I decided to sleep on the couch. I turn off the lights and lay down. I'm just about ready to doze off when I hear a sound coming from the roof. It sounded like footsteps and scratching, as well as heavy breathing and panting from a dog. The sounds on the roof travel to the back end of the house. It sounds like something jumped down on their small wooden porch in the back. The familiar sound of their dog barking is heard in the background. There was something out there that barked back. But it sounded more like a person screaming than a dog bark. This continued back and forth. Their dog sounded like it was running towards their shed as it gave its last bark. I looked out the window and got a better glimpse of that large dog in better lighting. 
It looked like a mangy, skinny bear, rather than a dog. The paws looked like hands, and I couldn't tell if there was a tail or not. At this point, I could hear my grandmother tell my grandfather to go out. It sounded like he was reluctant to step out of the bedroom. But he eventually did, and grabbed his rifle. I go outside first in front of him. He does a blessing in Navajo as we're walking out. Yelling in Navajo how this thing needs to stop coming around here and leave them alone. We both stop at the same time as we see this thing in front of us. He yells again for this thing to leave. And then I remember how he usually doesn't keep ammo in his rifle. So I was hoping yelling at it would work. As it just so happens, it did. The thing runs away after a slight stare down. As we go back inside the house, he says that it's a skinwalker with the body of a stray dog. He lights some sage and does more prayers before getting too tired and going off to bed. I stay awake the rest of the night. Thank you.